This may be a scene that you take for granted. But without Kent Wildlife Trust, it may not be here. The charity fights tirelessly to preserve the county's unique range of habitats and species. And it turns 50 this year. We're a member-based organisation. We've got 30,000 members across the county now, which makes us by any measure a, a significant organisation. And these people, they recognise that Kent's countryside is important, that life forms and species on their own are worth looking after and protecting, and that we need to know and be informed about that. The Trust looks after those species on 60 very different nature reserves across the county, which are all open to the public. And we work very hard on these reserves to maintain a, a natural habitat which hosts a wide range of the proper species for that area. So we've got Chalk Downland, we've got Kent's really only remaining heathland area at Hothfield, uh, we've got bogs, we've got coastal reserves, uh, we've got neutral meadows down in the Weald, a whole range of habitats representing why Kent is important. But the real weight behind us are those amateur naturalists, those informed people who look at what's going on, tell us what species they've, they've identified, tell us why some of these sites are special. One example of this is Seven Oaks Wildlife Reserve, led for many years by the Harrison family. Half of the site consists of spectacular man-made lakes, where the water levels are managed to expose specially created islands in spring and summer, providing feeding and nesting areas. We get lots of widgeon and teal, pintail, shovelers, so all those sorts of ducks. Um, and then we get breeding here, we get things like, quite exciting, the little ring plover, which breed on the sort of gravelly, sandy areas. We get lapwing, um, barnacle geese on occasion. So it's, it's a whole mix of, of real sort of water birds, basically. And then in the woodlands, we have um, lesser spotted woodpecker, which is quite exciting bird, um, because they're not terribly common. It's also quite an exciting place for things like orchids and fungi and we, we get a very good range of, of plant species through, throughout as well. The reserves are also crucial in bringing some species back from the brink of extinction. A good example of that is uh, our work with monkey orchids and there's only three sites in the entire UK that have monkey orchids on and they're uh, all sites where it's grass and habitat that really needs management. Uh, and at Parkgate Down, which is our, our best site for it, what we do is we've used a combination of grazing with, with cattle and other animals to recreate traditional management of the countryside and that's what has, has boosted them up. And now Parkgate Down is just a stunning sight to see, not just monkey orchids in their hundreds, uh, but a whole range of orchids. And it's uh, restoring that sort of traditional management, getting the habitat right more than even uh, protection and more than reintroduction, getting the management absolutely spot on, which is doing the job. The conservation of the chalk downs on which the Adonis blue butterfly lives has been so successful it symbolises a new dawn for the way species are managed and it's no coincidence it's also the Trust's logo. It also reflects very much our new um, drive towards bigger nature reserves and towards connecting nature reserves to make a, a coherent network of wildlife sites right across the county because it's one of those species that needs uh, to be able to move between sites. It's very threatened by climate change that would change conditions on individual nature reserves and we need to be able to allow it to migrate. Uh, and so a lot of our work now, which is about connecting out wildlife on a, on a grand scale, connecting out wildlife habitats and nature reserves on a grand scale, will benefit the Adonis blue as well as other, other butterflies. So it's kind of standing for this new approach to, to rebuilding the countryside. The Trust has had to be constantly vigilant about threats to wildlife in the county. We have had to fight airport threats and continue to, to fight airport threats. And Boris Johnson's sort of talking about another Thames Estuary airport. We've had to fight the threat just in the last few years of a, of a potential massive airport at Cliff, which would have destroyed a major nature reserve and uh, internationally designated land. Um, we're currently fighting proposals for expansion of aviation at Lyd Airport, which threatened Dungeness, which is globally unique as a habitat, and yet we're still having to, to try and fight to protect these sites. The current headquarters, Thailand Barn near Maidstone, was opened by Prince Charles in 1993. 
It's one of the Trust's five education centres. Highly successful venues visited by around 13,000 schoolchildren each year, learning the message of wildlife conservation. It's an increasingly vital part of the Trust's work, given the future challenges it faces. Global warming is the biggie, I think. Global warming is going to change everything. Um, um, no matter what you think about the, the cause of it, it's happening, it's real, it's going to squeeze our coastlines. It's going to I mean we lose the intertidal habitats, the estuaries will be, uh, of North Kent to make North Kent what it is, and which is so important for birds, may just disappear underwater. It's going to change the climate on our chalk grass and it's going to change our woodlands. And we've got to act to not just reduce the carbon emissions, but we're going to have to plan uh, to mitigate those and, and, and to uh, work so that wildlife can actually survive the climate change which is coming. As a small independent charity, Kent Wildlife Trust has achieved a huge amount. And as for the next 50 years, well that's all down to the continuing support of the people of Kent. <laughs>